the fermentation. Now, let's talk about the fermentation process. Uh, there got to be a better way than this. Very nice. <laughs> Let's say we take our corn, we cook it at about, you know, slightly under 200 degrees. Let's say 195 degrees Fahrenheit for a couple hours in a bunch of water. So you got a big pot, you put about that much corn in there, I don't know, about that much, and you fill it up with uh, water and you let it sit there and simmer, a slow cook for about two hours. What that's doing is that is uh, releasing the starches out of that corn so the sugars the natural sugars that are in that corn then you let it cool down and from there once it gets just just a, a little bit above room temperature we're looking at maybe about 90 degrees 95 degrees or so you throw in your yeast now do you have to throw in yeast no yeast is around us everywhere i've got yeast on me right here you know it's it's all over the place except for a sterile environment all right so if you give it if you let it sit there the natural yeasts that are around us will um uh, will eventually cause the juices from the corn to start to ferment all right However, we tend we, we use our own juices or I'm sorry, we use our own yeast because this gives us two things that we can control. Number one, it makes the fermenta fermentation process go faster. Right? So if you introduce a large amount of yeast into this bat, this this mixture, you are speeding up that fermentation process. Which normally I don't know, I've never done it without the pitched yeast the regular yeast that you put in uh, but let's say it takes a month to ferment properly right well by pitching your own yeast and a lot of it um, what you're doing is you're, you're speeding it up and it'll ferment in just a few days you know um, depending on what you're doing but anyways back on track all right so it speeds up the fermentation process that's why we use our own yeast and two, it gives us the choice of what yeast we want to be put in there. Right? Because not all yeast is going to yield a good flavor. So, you use, a, there are all kinds of different yeasts out there and stuff. But honestly, what I like, uh, and everybody that's tried any of my fictitional, fictitious um, alcohol that I have never actually made, because um, it's illegal, they say that they like it better, you know, the, the, the bread yeast. I just used regular Fleischmann's bread yeast. So, but anyways, so we pitch our own yeast to speed up the process as well as uh, give it the flavor that we desire because the natural yeasts may yield uh, a not so good flavor. <clears throat> All right, so where are we at? I'm trying to keep it basic. I'm trying to keep it really basic here. Okay, so. We've taken our juices from whatever um, plant that we're using. We could do potatoes. You know, we can boil some potatoes and get it to release those starches into the water. We could uh, do that with the same thing with, we, you know, we don't want to boil. Boil is too hot, so about 195. We could cook our corn. We could cook our um, rye and we get the juices. We let it cool down to around 95 degrees then we pitch our yeast our yeast pitching our yeast just means you're putting it in there pour it in whatever so you put your yeast in and then you cover it up now you can cover it up with just a towel like i do my pickled corn or something like that um you could just cover it up just you're wanting to keep flies and stuff like that out of there or you can what what i tend to use is i've got a five gallon bucket that people use for for making beer and it's got the little bubbler on the top to allow air out but no air in that kind of thing um, so but you just let it sit and um, typically uh, 
you're going to let it sit for probably about five days and you're good there. Take five days. All right. And then after that, you take the, 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 the fermented juices that you now have in your bucket and those fermented juices are a very rudimentary beer or wine. All right. They're all, all of these things, they're all the same. You know, wine and beer and brandies and schnapps, they're all the same. You have juices from some sort of plant that is an edible plant that has starches that break down into sugars. The yeast eats the sugars that are in the water, right? And its consum consumption of the sugars creates uh, a chemical reaction that creates the alcohol. So now in your bucket that's fermented, you literally have a type of beer. Now you take that type of beer, and in order to make liquor, moonshine, rum, or in my case, what I'm going to be doing, tequila, all right? You then take it and you put it in your distiller. 